we wanted a few women. We didn't want to go over all the Alexis. It might lead to rather embarrassing moments. And so we decided uh, over a beer one night that we'd put an ad in the paper. So we worded the ad. And it went something like, wanted two beautiful, articulate, intelligent young ladies. I turned up. <laughs> wanted to escort two handsome young bachelors to dinner dance on Saturday. View, definitely not matrimony. And I gave my phone number, which has an answering service on it. So we rang up the Independent, we rang up the Irish Times, and both papers refused out of hand to print the ad. Was the Bachelor Club not to suggest um, good big fine rugby players confirm bachelors? Yeah, it does beers, sound that way. <laughs> <laughs> But it isn't, obviously. There's lots of nice trim men here and girls. What did they think the advert was about? Well, I can quote an editor of one of the papers, I'm not saying which one, who referred to it as a, a brothel and a prostitute club. <laughs> but as I was very quick to point back, of course, we don't have to form clubs to find prostitutes and brothels. Consequently, you know, this was just wasn't on. But do you find yourself under some pressure to get married? Why do you have to band yourselves together? I don't think it's a question of banding yourselves together <laughs> to fight off all the women. <laughs> That's what you're getting at. <laughs> or alternatively, to get all the women together to, to get, you know, to keep the fellas off. It's nothing like that at all. It's purely uh, an institution. <laughs> oh, God, a society. <laughs> <laughs> or an organisation which will enable uncommitted people to meet without any commitment. Listen, what brought you into this thing at all? Well, I heard about it through some friends of mine who were starting oh. up this, uh, I suppose you call it society, an organisation, and it uh, sounds interesting. And being as I'm just back from America, and don't know too many people, and not wanting to get involved right away, I thought it would be quite a nice way of meeting people. But are you a con uh, confirmed bachelor girl? Not really, no. Definitely wouldn't like to be a career girl, but I definitely wouldn't like to get married just for the sake of getting married. You know, I think it's something, it's the uh, biggest move in one's life, and you should be very sure before you get married that, you know, you want to, first of all, even before you meet the man, and then if you do, fine, you know that this is the person you want to spend your life with. But in the meantime, I think you can have a good time enjoying yourself, meeting all sorts of people, broadening your mind, your interests. But couldn't this be self-defeating? Because here you are, you want to avoid the, the, the right man, and you've sort of involved yourself in a whole circle of new people here. Yes. This would be disastrous for you. Well, not really, no. Well, you never know what might happen. You might get that fine if I have more than three dates with someone. <laughs> but if you do, what happens? Well, you do get a little fine, I believe. The man gets fined if he dates you more than three times. Um, some, I don't know how much of it is, is fined, but um, I think it might be worth it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little bit unfair, isn't it? Well, I suppose, uh, I don't think it is really, you know, it makes it sort of, I think a lot of people would come to the club then with the intention of just meeting someone for marriage. I think this way, it lays a nice basis so that if you do happen to, but if not, a lot of people you can feel free to have fun with and go out and enjoy yourself without any strings attached. We, of course, off. fight against the stigma of bachelor. But what does this have over sort of a, a lonely hearts club or a, a sort of a, a fund of dating people? Well, we have a rule which says, quite categorically, it's probably one of the few rules we have, <laughs> that if you start to go out regularly dating with a girl to the exclusion of other people, then the bachelor club no longer thinks you should be there, at least temporarily, until either the relationship blossoms into marriage or comes to nothing. Consequently, we come back and we're still the best of friends. Is that a great idea? Fine. <laughs> but but what, do you, what do you do about the guy who isn't so... Um, so sort of morally bound as yourself, a good liberal, red-blooded guy well, who turns up on your doorstep. What I'm you not saying what I am as a fact of interest, but uh, I don't think that the moral issue really crops up at all. I mean, we can't. We, I'm not going to ask people what their morals are. Do they believe they can or can sleep with women? It's not my concern. But I, I think, in all fairness, that any fellow who meets a girl in a dance or at a party, I think the same thing applies. It's up to themselves to see what they want in the person. So I don't feel bound to be worried, really. Is it a bit, uh, does it not defeat itself in that you're bringing people together and you know you have to deal with sort of the natural attraction, people are going to pair themselves off and go and get married? Well, fair dues, if that's going to be the way, fair play to them. Again, I respect the institution marvellously. All I say is that when such time as commitment comes, there are many other organisations which cater. There's pre-marriage courses, for example, in Rathfano. But we're not concerned. When it's a relationship, as far as we're concerned, they opt out of the bachelor's club. But do, do you sometimes sort of hit upon the, the, the people who come in for, for what you would think to be the wrong reason? Yes, you will get, you know, um, some people interested, uh, less desirable, I suppose, who would be interested just for the wrong reason. But uh, usually I think they find out pretty fast that they're in the wrong place and uh, 
you know, they just drop out. <laughs> Where do you see the whole thing ending? What are you going to be become in the next? I'm afraid to think. <laughs> <laughs> Probably banned from every newspaper in the country if they were gone. I don't know. A, a lot of people rang up for crack. You know, it was painstakingly obvious that a number of 65, 75 year olds, spinsters and bachelors in various um, business houses, rang up. And there was something like, is that 377971? Yes, says I. Well, I was told to ring for a message. Obviously, there's going to be this aspect. We're going to be made fun of. Well, fair play to them. Let them have a laugh. Uh, we, however, had a range between us that in such a case, we just say it's a private number. Sorry, you must have your own number. So we were going to give them the opportunity. Does it bother you at all that you might be considered by some people to be a bit of a lad? Not really, no. It doesn't worry us in the slightest. The fact is, of course, that at this moment in time, we have 200 people who don't mind being considered a laugh either, so perhaps this is indicative. Perhaps we've even uncovered a really big social problem. <laughs>